Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 76 of Ask the CEO with Avraham Gatile. Today, I'd like to introduce a very special guest. He has served as chief executive, chief marketer, and evangelist for technology companies from seed stage to NASDAQ. He led business and product development programs that generated over $200 million in revenue. As CEO of Sensix and a VR AR pioneer, he created business with industry leaders in consumer electronics, such as Samsung, LG, Microsoft, Apple, Intel. A frequent presenter at conferences, he authored a popular syndicated blog on VR and hosted a podcast interviewing CEOs and other industry leaders. He also co-founded two companies, Unwired Express and Talia Technology. It is my pleasure to welcome Yuval Bouguer. Welcome, Yuval. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you so much for joining. So Yuval, your company, WhyCharge, developed a new method for charging devices wirelessly. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So we send energy through the air. Uh, and it's the first company, I mean, you read off uh, a list of companies that I worked for. And this is the first one where it takes me about five seconds to explain to family members why this is a good idea. Because if you can send energy safely through the air, then you don't need a power cord, you don't need to charge your phone, you don't need a battery, you don't need to replace batteries. And that opens up a tremendous amount of uh, opportunities and possibilities on things that you can do. So the idea, the need to free yourself from cables and power cords is, is obviously very old. Uh, what we were able to do is finally you know, crack this problem and deliver a working solution. Now, you know, that sounds really interesting. Do you have an idea why it took so long for such a solution to be developed? Well, it, it's a difficult problem to solve. And I think that the first instinct of engineers when they want to send power through the air is to use radio frequency, to use radio waves. And they say, okay, you know, we know that we can send small amounts of RF. I mean, this is how radio works, right? Uh, you get little bits of energy and you amplify them and then uh, you could hear the, the radio station. But it turns out that sending radio frequency is not a good idea for wireless. For, for one thing, uh, RF uh, tends to diverge, meaning that the beam sort of goes like this. And if you want to capture energy on a small receiver, say something on a phone, then if the beam goes like this, that's not good because the area that you can capture is very small. And then when people say, well, we'll just amplify the power, we'll just drive more power, then you very quickly get into safety limits. I mean, no one wants a radio tower in their living room. So it turns out that RF is a, is a great and bad idea on how to, how to deliver power. And so we use infrared technology, uh, which turns out to be much better. It's better because we can send a narrow focused beam. I mean, think about it like the light coming out of a laser pointer. You know, you could hit a very tiny dot on a wall across the room with your laser pointer, and it's also safe. Part of it perhaps is 50% of the sun's energy is infrared, so as humans, we've sort of gotten used to it. Uh, we know how to deal with uh, infrared. And you, uh, you know, I'm glad I say this because the first question that came to mind was, is this thing safe? Can you walk through it? Is it safe with children and things like that? Yes, it's, it's absolutely safe. And, and by the way, let me show you how it works. So in, in this room, I've got a, uh, on the ceiling, I've got an energy transmitter, an infrared uh, transmitter. And here is, uh, if you can see it, here is what the receiver looks like. This is sort of a receiver that we use for uh, people to evaluate. It just looks like a, a USB dongle. And so let's do a little bit of magic. I'm gonna just move, tilt the camera downwards, if I may. I, I don't know if a lot of guests do that on your show, but here I am doing it right now. And if you can see the, the pad here that I have, I'm going to take this uh, strip of uh, infrared LEDs right there, and I'm going to connect the, uh, the receiver to it, and I'm just going to put it there. And now the, and there you go. Uh, it just lit up. And so this is coming from the infrared transmitter up on the ceiling. So if I just take my hand and move it this way, First, That's you see awesome. that I, I'm not burning, it, nothing happened, you know, the beam just stopped. And as soon as my hands move away, um, you know, lighting just uh, starts again. So a few seconds later, 
uh, one finds the other and there you go. That was the uh, uh, one minute demo of how it works and you can see it actually works and it also actually delivers meaningful amounts of energy, enough to power a phone or enough to power an IoT device or, uh, or many, many other uh, devices. Not your Tesla, not your TV, <laughs> but if it's battery operated and it takes a few watts, then we can drive it. So now I understand why you have such a nice tan because you've got that uh, infrared transmitter right above you. <laughs> well, so to, to answer your question, it's completely safe. It was approved uh, by the FDA. The FDA classified it as what's called a class one laser device. A class one laser device is the same classification as your laser printer or your optical mouse. So it's completely safe for use. And by the way, it's the FDA because in the US, if it's light based, it's the FDA. If it was uh, RF based, radio based, it would be the FCC. So it's not a medical device and it doesn't give me tan. It uses invisible infrared energy, but it's, uh, it's safe and it works and it works today. Just in terms of power consumption, I'm just curious, um, how, you know, how, how much power does it consume and how does that work? Sure. So I think the first question that people ask is how much power can it actually deliver? Uh, and today we have uh, models that deliver about three watts and they can do so you know, across the room, sort of 15 feet, no problem. Just to give you a sense, um, if you take an iPhone and it's on and it's operating, you need to deliver about half a watt to it so it just works endlessly. So it does never runs out of battery. So half a watt is approximately what it consumes to just stay running. Now, if you deliver a watt, then half a watt is used for just operating and the other half you could use for charging. So anything you deliver about half a, above half a watt can actually charge a phone. And we deliver about uh, three watts. And um, the uh, uh, transmitter itself depends on uh, various things, but it takes about 20 or 30 watts. So it's, it's sort of like a, a small uh, light bulb. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about IoT technology and how does this wireless charging fit into uh, Industry 4.0, for example? So I think that the, sort of the hidden secret of IoT deployment is that sensors need power. Uh, I mean, everyone sort of knows that they need power, but not too many people think about it. Because you, you look at a smart building, well, why is a smart building smart, right? It's smart because it's got a lot of sensors and the data from these sensors gets aggregated and then analyzed. Um, so you've got a lot of sensors, you need to power them. Well, how are you gonna do that? Well, you have basically, before Y charge, you had two options. One option is to just run wires to them. So you got a hundred sensors in a room, you're gonna run hundred sets of wires and you're gonna pay a hundred dollar per hour for an electrician to do that. And it sort of quickly adds up, not to mention what it does to your building and not to mention what it's gonna to cost to maintain it or move a sensor around or add new ones and so on. The other option is a battery. And battery sounds good until you need to start replacing them. So, so if a battery has a lifetime of a year and if you've got 10,000 sensors, that that means that on average, you're gonna be replacing 40 batteries a day in perpetuity if you sort of manage to schedule it so that they run out exactly when you want them to run out. I think it'll be cheaper to hire someone full-time just to manually stand it with a clipboard and read the settings. <laughs> Exactly. So the other option is wireless power. And so with wireless power, if you hang a wireless transmitter, such as the one I had here, now it, now it can deliver power without wires, safely deliver power without wires to all these sensors. And installing a sensor becomes as easy as I take the sensor, I put it on the wall where I want it, and that's the end of it because now it receives power through the air. I never need to replace a battery and I never need to run a wire. So we think that wireless power is actually gonna be a key enabler for successful IoT deployments. And what about smart cities? So, you know, uh, smart cities now, it, there's a big push for uh, governments to uh, smart enable their cities to serve their citizens and uh, there are lots of connected devices coming out. How, how does that play a role? 
So at, at the moment, our technology is focused on indoor use. So we're not uh, yet planning to put it on lampposts and, uh, and do that. But what we do allow, and that's actually a popular application, is if you think about last time you went into a Starbucks, uh, some tables are up against the wall near an outlet, and you can charge your phone this way. And the others in the middle of the floor, not near an outlet, you cannot charge your phone. So we actually now have a method where you can take your existing phone and charge it even on a table that's not connected. Now, a Starbucks may not be a government property, but when you start thinking about public libraries, airports, you start thinking about hospitals or airports or bus stations, all of a sudden the ability to deliver power without everyone sort of scaring around and, and looking for the power outlet as you've seen in airports many times is a good thing. And that's, that's one small way where we can help smart cities. So you mean nobody's going to be sitting there and hogging the power outlets anymore? We hope so. <laughs> Excellent. Now, how does one implement the solution? So uh, one of the beautiful things about this technology is that although it's sophisticated on the inside, it's, it's very simple on the outside. I mean, the, the receiver that I showed you uh, is basically, you see it has a little USB connector, and on this USB you can get 5 volts, so I can take any device, and I'm sure I've got 100 different devices in, in this room, from a wireless keyboard to a wireless mouse to, to a power bank to a phone, and I just plug it in, and I'm good to go in terms of evaluating whether this technology works for me. It's as simple as a USB connection. What ultimately happens is that people start saying, I want to embed it into the device. So for instance, let's assume that I have a, a smart lock. Uh, a lock maybe with a keypad or maybe a, a face ID or maybe a biometric sensor. And I don't want to run electricity to my door, right? Because it's, it's difficult and expensive. And if I put batteries on the smart lock, I have to replace them every two months or else I, I'm risking, you know, getting locked out of my home or office or whatever it is. Or so locked the, in. I'm sorry? Or locked in. Or locked in. So by delivering wireless power, we eliminate the battery and, and not only that, but the, the vendor that makes the wireless, uh, makes the smart locks can now start adding functionality like cloud recording uh, that he couldn't do before that because it was battery limited. So a smart lock vendor would take the battery compartment and basically modify it slightly. So it includes one of these uh, receivers and, and that's the end of it. So what's happening now is we're starting to work with uh, vendors that are excited about the opportunity to get rid of the cable, to get rid of the battery, to get rid of the battery change. And you'll start seeing third-party devices that implement wide charge technology in them as the method for power delivery. Now, clean energy is a very popular thing nowadays, and everybody's always talking about the impact on the environment. How ecological is wireless charging? So you could look at it in two ways. Uh, one is if you can replace batteries, if you uh, eliminate the need to replace batteries, then you are making a big impact in terms of the landfills, right? Uh, so many batteries are single use batteries and then they just get tossed away and you know some of them recycle better and some of them just go into a landfill and that's that. And so if you have fewer batteries, that's a, that's a wonderful net plus for the environment. Um, the, the flip side, just for intellectual honesty, is that uh, wireless charging is never going to be as efficient as cable charging, right? When you connect the cable, you've got higher efficiency you, you, than when you do it wirelessly. Uh, however, I could also say that using a mobile phone is less efficient than using a corded phone. But people do it anyway because of the convenience and freedom that it gives them. So we think there's a there's a very nice analogy to be made on the efficiency side. And then we, we do save the landfills because we reduce battery usage. Yeah, now let's talk a little bit about security. Um, you know that uh, hackers are out there hacking into our government's election system. So no, uh, no device or technology is immune. So can you talk a little bit to the security of your technology? 
Well, our, uh, in a simplistic fashion, our, our technology is a wireless power supply. So if you take a, a wall ward, the five volt power supply, it doesn't have communication running over it. it. It can't be hacked. It's just a cable that delivers electricity, right? And now we give you the same thing, except it's wireless. So I'd say never say never, right? But I don't see the big benefit of hacking it. And, and what exactly can you hack? I mean, it's a point-to-point -point energy delivery. So uh, energy is delivered between the transmitter and the receiver, meaning that if you're outside my office, there's no way you can, quote-unquote, steal that energy because you don't have access to it. And because there's no communication that goes over that link, I think it's pretty secure. Yeah. So you've all, I'm, you know, I'm just curious, how did, uh, how did this company come to be? I mean, it's a very innovative solution that you have and very unique, a one of a kind solution. You know, how, how did you get started with this? The problem was obvious for many people for a long time. And the uh, founder of the company invented the technology and said, wow, I could actually use this to deliver power efficiently and safely without wires. Uh, that was seven or eight years ago. And then slowly but surely, you know, the technology got built and it got tested and it got proved and it got approved from a safety. And now we're finally rolling it out. And all these years of, you know, fermentation are, are finally coming to fruition. Fantastic. Yuval, how do people connect with you? There are many ways to get in touch with me. You can follow me on Twitter at the Charge Guy. That's T H E C H A R G E G U Y. Uh, that's also the address of my blog, www.thechargeguy.com. And of course, you can follow the corporate site at Y Charge. That's W I dash C H A R G E dot com. And on Twitter at Y Charge LTD. Great. And I'll post that to the show notes so people can just click on that and get right to you. Thank you very much. Yuval, do you have any parting words of wisdom to share with the audience? I think that the, what I would say is don't get left behind. I mean, you can think about wireless power as the equivalent of the Wi-Fi revolution, as the equivalent of the cellular revolution. And if, if you make a computer and it doesn't have Wi-Fi, then you're not going to sell many of these. And in five years, if your device doesn't get power wirelessly from a distance, that's going to be a problem. Uh, so think about it, you know, look closely, evaluate it, but don't get left behind. Wonderful. Yuval, thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom. I really enjoy having you on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.